Hello everyone, good morning. It is live trading workshop time. My name is Daniel and I will be your moderator today. And we also have Nicholas of us today who will be executing the trades from our trading desk. It is September 26, 2024, 9am. I'm just looking outside my window here in Montreal. It's still somewhat dark outside. The days are noticeably getting shorter. It only means one thing. Summer is over. Oh, well. A long, long period of winter is ahead of us. But that's just what life is all about here in Montreal. Long winters, short summers. In any case, uh, welcome, guys, uh, to this live trading workshop. All right. So before we get started, a quick reminder that Trading does contain substantial risk and therefore is not suited for every investor. If you trade, make sure to only use risk capital, which is capital that you actually can afford to lose. When it comes to backtest performance or hypothetical performance, keep in mind that this is not necessarily indicative of future performance. And any trades and trade setups discussed in this webinar are for informational purposes only and should not be construed as trade advice. All right. So with this out of the way, a quick introduction, especially for those of you who are joining us today for the very first time. And I'm talking specifically about the ones who perhaps saw me yesterday for the first time in our webinar. So welcome, guys. I'm glad you came on board. It's awesome to have you. So we are tradingindicators.com. My name is Daniel, I'm the guy here on the left-hand side. And today in our trading room, we also have Nicholas with us. Nicholas is indeed the mastermind behind our liquidity IQ and MA Rush indicators. So who better to bring on board today than Nicholas to um, yeah, help us find some interesting setups. Most of what we do today will be based on technical analysis. This doesn't mean that we do not take into account fundamentals at all. Uh, but mostly when it comes to fundamentals, uh, we use it as perhaps, you know, no trade filters when big news events are coming up. For example, we will uh, stay away from the markets as things tend to be very volatile and as a result, very unpredictable. And then trading, we want to stay away from these uh, kind of events when things are very unpredictable. Um, you know, you lure your odds of having a successful trade. All right. So with that, uh, a couple of ground rules for today. First of all, the Q&A box is open in your Zoom window. If you have questions, don't be shy. Put your questions there. There will be plenty of time to go through your questions. So please make this webinar your own. The more questions we get, the better it is. So please take advantage of the Q&A box in Zoom. All right. The focus of today will be day trading. And this doesn't mean that we only do day trading here in our business. But because our session is only roughly 90 minutes long and we strive to open and potentially close trades within that time frame or time window, uh, we need to use these shorter time frames. Thus, day trading. I'm going to focus mostly on futures, but also perhaps look at some stocks if we see interesting setups. Having this set, uh, that this is mainly a day trading event today, the technical patterns and the strategies that we are going to be using today, these are universally applicable. So if you're a swing trader, you can use the same rules, the same strategies to swing trade equities, for example. Also, today we will be using TradingView as our trading platform. If you have our indicators on a different platform, however, you should have no problem following along. Everything we show in TradingView is also available on our other trading platforms, be it Think or swim, ninja trader, modif wave, or whatever it may be. And the reason why we're using TradingView is simply because it is the greatest common denominator. Most of you have heard or used TradingView before. Therefore, we're going to use it in today's session. And of course, uh, today's live trades um, are chosen as illustrative examples of how to use our indicators. And because we want to take some trades for sure, uh, we may need to force some trades uh, today just to show you how we would do it and also may close them prematurely. So please keep this in mind. The objective is to show you some examples, how we would live trade. And sometimes you may take a trade even if not everything lines up for that reason. All right, perfect. So uh, with that, um, one more word. Um, is every trade that we're going to take today a winner? Perhaps but perhaps not. 
There's no such strategy which will guarantee you a 100% success rate. However, we are going to do everything in our powers to, you know, put the odds in our favor to increase our odds of having a successful trade. Uh, for example, we're going to do a multi time frame pivot analysis. That sounds complicated. Actually, it's quite simple because our indicators will do all this work for us. But indirectly, this is what we are going to be doing. We are going to look at significant support and resistance levels and structure our trades based on these. We're going to look at what is the current trend doing? What is momentum doing to you know, perhaps filter some setups? Once again, in the uh, idea that or using the idea that we want to stack our odds in our favor. We're trying to keep it simple as well. So we're not going to try to overthink um, a trade. And we're going to stay away if there are major market events happening. And in fact, what we're going to do first today, we're going to look at the economic calendar to see what's going on this morning. Every trader should be aware of what's happening because as mentioned before, if there are major market events, maybe you want to stay away or not opening a trade if these are happening. So let's check it out what's on the agenda today in terms of market events. So one easy way to do this, in fact, is to just go to trading view. Here we have it. And in the bottom right corner, you have this little calendar icon, which opens up and you can uh, yeah, see all the events which are happening today. So for example, um, and you can actually see the ranking as well too. So you have uh, three bars as very significant, two bars as medium, and perhaps one bar here as minor events. And you can even also filter by this. I'm gonna click on my filter icon here. And we can see that today, uh, actually at 9.20, in about 15 minutes, 30 minutes, um, Paolo speech, speaking, um, the Fed shit chairman, uh, discussing perhaps some outlook on what the interest rate policy will be moving forward. The good news is we will not be opening a trade before 9.20 um, because there's one other market event which is happening uh, at 9.30, which is the opening of the cash market. And experience has told us to, you know, to wait until the market is open and then we are going to look for trade setups. This doesn't mean that we're going to waste time until then. We're actually going to prepare our trading game or trading plan by looking through you know, a whole host of different symbols and charts to see what could be a potential setups moving uh, into the market open so that we are prepared when the market is actually open, the cash market, of course. As you know, futures are the most, for the majority of them, they trade uh, almost 24 hours a day with some small breaks in between. But today, uh, we're going to wait until the cash market opens. All right. So with that, um, I'm going to pass the word over to Nicholas. Uh, Nicholas is going to show you how he's going to set up his, uh, his setup, his charts. Uh, he's going to show you how we're going to connect to our broker, which is going to be interactive brokers today. And just in general, he's going to give you an overview of what's going on in the markets today. All right. So Nicholas, uh, are you there? And your microphone is muted. Still muted. <laughs> little micro microphone issue. Um, we had this before. Potentially, he may need to <laughs> re-log into this. No, I still can't hear you. Uh, I think just disconnect it and plug it back in. Little headset issue, but not to worry. We still have plenty of time. And in the meantime, we're going to look at the Q&A box. If there are already some questions today, and I think now... Um, while Nicholas is setting up. All right, so, and I have to say, we do have a nicely attended live trading workshop today. Should be good now, Daniel. Yeah, hey, Nicholas, how are you? Hi, perfect. Good to have good. you. <laughs> All right, Thank so you. please take it away, share your screen, and show us how you will be setting up your charts today. Perfect, so we're gonna be trading from TradingView, like Daniel mentioned. And we're using the trading panel. We've connected to Interactive Brokers Live. So when we click trade, it opens up this uh, order placement window over here. And then later, we're going to also look at our positions and placed orders, et cetera, down there in the trading panel. So um, the way we're setting up our charts today, let me just hop over to a futures chart. So I'll hop over to micro gold futures. 
which is one of the setups we're going to keep an eye on. Basically, on every single chart, we have the indicator set up the exact same way. So we're on the five minute chart up here, the time frame, and liquidity IQ is applied to the charts. I like to keep mentor mode off just so we have less clutter because we're going to have a chart, a screen with four charts on it at once, and it gets hard to see the actual level. So we turn that off. And the time frame, the reference time frame is set to 30 minutes. So it's kind of a bit of a higher time frame than the chart. Uh, which we're grabbing our levels from. And uh, we have a few setups that we're already keeping an eye on. So number one, and oh, I forgot to mention, we also have MA Rush applied to the chart time frame just to get a read on what the current momentum is. And on this chart right here, this is micro gold, and this is actually the setup on several charts. So I guess the market looks alike on many different symbols right now. But on gold here, what happened this morning is we had this run up here. There was kind of a magnet zone trade. Finally, it took off towards 2,700. Broke through this prior resistance right here, I guess, from this high volume pivot back there. And the setup we were expecting was a potential zone break retrace. So price breaks out up here. And then the idea is it comes back down and tests this zone and gives us the chance to enter in um, out for a long position, right? Expecting price to bounce and the trend to continue upwards. Of course, we're going to wait until the market open, as we always do. Usually, um, there's no news before the market open, but in eight minutes, we have that Fed speech. So it's going to increase volatility, most likely. And right here, we can kind of see this setup getting a little bit invalidated um, as price is really just breaking through that resistance. And, you know, I guess the next stop on the train here is probably going to be somewhere in this region of noise here where there was a lot of shares or contracts traded this morning and well from actually from yesterday afternoon to in into this morning so price really sold off here and i guess looking maybe at a bit of a higher time frame on this one it might make sense because gold has broken out to um i think it's like decade highs uh, very quickly and has just been continuously running up. And looking at something like the 15 minute, we can see just how significant this is. This might turn out to look out something like this, um, just because if we look at the size of this red 15 minute candle already, and that's prior to the Fed speech, um, it's already the biggest downturn that the contract has seen since last Wednesday. I think that's last. Yeah, that's last Wednesday. So this is the biggest sell-off or beginning of a sell-off that we have seen in over a week. So we'll see what happens. On the five-minute chart, um, the nearest support on this one is all the way down at 2670. Uh, we're still bullish here. This is such a quick snap downwards that MA Rush probably isn't going to read bearish until somewhere like over here if this trend continues. So with bullish MA rush, if price does come down into here, I think it's potential long bounce idea. We can grab one contract down here, expecting us to bounce out of this area, maybe to the middle of the uh, support and resistance zone for a quick scalp. So here are four different symbols we have open. Top left here, I'm gonna we're gonna look at all these to see if there's any setup. So the top left is Bitcoin. Let me expand this a bit micro bitcoin futures and i want to just get a refresher on what bitcoin has been up to so it failed off of seventy thousand, but now it did make a higher low here and it's just been in a continuous uptrend recently okay zooming in here it's having trouble breaking this get this out of the way this resistance up here so i guess that's about sixty-five thousand. so bitcoin's having trouble breaking and holding sixty-five thousand. it's tried multiple times back here back here liquidity capture and it sold off now we have a bunch of liquidity captures and a zone break so i think we were thinking this might be a zone break retrace setup because price is not just hitting sixty-five thousand and then selling off like it has back here or back here instead it came up hit it and it's there's still demand there's still people buying many liquidity captures and a zone break oftentimes this is signs this is a sign of accumulation prior to price just kind of lifting off of the level so we'll see what happens at the open um it's not it's surprisingly it's not moving and this contract you know it's not terribly liquid so the chart's not that nice but uh surprisingly it's not move i, I would expect bitcoin to be moving more under these market conditions but we will see what happens at the open uh, this might be a little bit 
too long to play out in our 90 minutes, but I think this is still a potentially a really good reward to risk for a long trade expecting this to break out. Okay, so that's Bitcoin. And as we go along, just so we don't lose track of what we're doing, I'm going to add alerts on everything. So what's yeah, happening on gold? By the way, that's that. that's a really cool technique uh, to keep track of things. Uh, it's not going to be an, an alert which automatically will trigger a trade, but it's going to be an alert when price reaches a certain level. And uh, it's going to just pop up on the screen telling us, hey, let's pay attention to this symbol. Something is uh, potentially setting up for a trade. Now we can pull the tracker manually if we feel everything is lined up. Exactly. So I set an alert. I want to know if gold comes down and loses these old pivots just to get my eyes on it. And here, this would have been a nice short, um, but at the time, it wasn't really a short setup. Uh, and now it's a little too sold for me to want to go in short. Maybe if price came back up and tested again, but it's still bullish gold on this time frame and the higher time frame. So I wouldn't want to go short. I think the safer thing is to wait, see if we cross down here for a long bounce. Okay, so back to these charts on Bitcoin. I don't really have an, a place to look for an alert here, but I'm going to add one anyways. Maybe if we break 65,200, I'll want to know about it. So we'll create an alert there, 65,200. And before I look at these other charts, well, what is this? This is soybeans, soybean oil, liquidity IQ on the 30 minute. It's pretty far away from any levels here. And that's on the five minute. This chart here, feeder cattle, futures. This looks like a zone break retrace. So on the 30 minute, how are we doing? Bullish, um, you know, on in the 30 minute time frame. Okay, long term downtrend, but that's far away. It does, even from that higher time frame, look like it might be a decent zone break retrace play for a little scalp. So if we come down into here to buy a contract, set our stop you know, like down here below these pivots and expecting us to get a little bit of a rebound to exit for a profit with good risk reward. And so. guys, just while Nicholas is setting up the alert here, if you're wondering why are we looking at these exotic futures contracts this morning, uh, the reason is simple, actually on the main futures contracts, and typically uh, we focus on these, uh, things are a bit overextended today. We have no clear levels inside. And maybe Nicholas, we can have a quick look at what the um, the main NQ and ES are doing this morning. Sure. And I'm going to see why we potentially will stay away from these because it's not as clear cut. And sometimes if things are not as clear cut, you know, you just stay away and trade some other contracts. There are plenty of fish in the ocean. Before I continue, just pointing out, look at how gold, um, oftentimes it's a nice thing to look out on a higher time frame and see, okay, how significant. I mean, we, we zoomed out and we said, hey, look, that red candle on the 15 minute is the biggest red candle in in eight days. So it's probably going to sell off more because that's a pretty significant retrace and that's what it currently is doing. So maybe we are going to get that chance at that long bounce trade this morning. Okay, so now checking out, yeah, the major indexes like NQ. I mean, look at this. This is just continuously running upwards, even with liquidity IQ. I mean, liquidity IQ is on the 30 minute. Look how far we are from the nearest semblance of a resistance or support level. Yeah. And guys, um, sorry, sorry, I just have to say this, Nicholas. If you guys, um, for those of you who joined me at yesterday's webinar, uh, do you remember how we discussed this breakout signal of NQ back uh, yesterday? I think it was at that point, maybe uh, two years, two years, sorry, two hours old. Wow, whatever. It would have still been a great opportunity to re-enter into that long move back then. But uh, yeah, great signal there and with a, um, a humongous uh, follow-through afterwards. Yeah, that's crazy. And if we set liquidity IQ even to the four hour, um, you know, there's no, I mean, we're almost at all-time highs here. The all-time highs, I think, are 2,900 or something. Um, let me zoom out to the 30 minutes. Yeah, so the all-time highs are all the way back here. I mean, the only noticeable level has already been broken. Maybe these pivots, 2,300 to 400. Then there's these spikes in areas of liquidity. Oh, well, here's one right here. Well, that's 2,400. Really, the nearest liquidity level is like 200 points ahead. So uh, not exactly time to hop in, at least for us right now. It's a good example here of liquidity IQ not having a nearby level 
but MA Rush offering you a nice way to maybe use it as a trailing stop as the trend goes up. So we can see price never really broke the third MA Rush line here, and that would be you know a, a, a viable trailing stop to use maybe the first, second, or third line, but we're not going to do that this morning. I think it's a little played out. So it's 9.20. Let's hop over back to our charts here. So this one was soybean futures. This, again, is a zone break retrace setup. Um, it's been bullish since yesterday. Price going up, holding MA Rush. And for those guys who don't know, um, this is one of my favorite setups. And we discussed it this morning with Nicholas. I, when I sent him some examples of what I like. Is almost all of them were of this nature. It's just something that happens so often in the market that we have a zone break. And then this broken resistance level will act as support. It switches basically roles. It was resistance before, now acting as support. Potentially a great opportunity to re-enter into the market with a very nearby stop loss. And it's just a nice quick scalp that potentially is setting up there. Exactly. And looking at soybean futures here, um, there hasn't really been a test of MA Rush too much. And I mean, there was one here. Just the way price is looking, I wouldn't doubt that it's going to be a pretty violent pullback below MA Rush here and below this resistance level just because of how overbought it looks on something like the 30 minutes. But I, you know, I, it's still a viable trade. So we put an alert here at 157.2 and it'll offer good reward to risk if we do come down to there to enter in, you know, just expecting a, a little bit of a bounce off of that zone. Okay, so that's every chart we need to look at on this screen. And then finally, we'll hop over here, see if there's anything in these other charts. So here we've got pretty much metals. And we already have Bitcoin on the other chart, so maybe I'll put silver here. Metals and oil. So I want to see if oil looks interesting today. Liquidity IQ on the 30 minutes. Let me hop over to a different chart tab here so we have more space. And how is the market reacting to speech? Nothing yet. Okay. All right, so on oil here, what happened recently? There was a short break. No zone break retrace yet to that level. What, what is this? Pretty much 70, 69.6. We have this liquidity level back here, which has been created a couple times in the mid 68s, like 68.5. Current price, 67.53. I'm thinking this could be a decent short zone break retrace, but I don't think it's going to make it all the way back up to 69.5 in our time frame. But if it bounces up to like these old levels here, 68.5, 68.6, we can take a contract short and just place our stop right here at this pivot. So if we do come back up to this zone right here, which actually got sold off recently, we can go in for a contract short and then set our stop maybe like right around here. 69 because expecting we don't want it to break through 69 and head all the way up to 69.6 or something so daniel i'm going to put an alert on oil i just want to be alerted if price goes up through 68.30 oops because while it could be i mean we just made a low of the day a second ago i believe it could be a good short and it'll go lower but uh, we're a little bit late to the party so i'd like it to have a pullback first Okay, so that's oil. Here I'd like to put gold back on the screen. Well, we're almost at our alert line. Hopefully the market open dips it down there. Okay, and what do we have on this screen? Silver. So silver looks the same as gold, pretty much. Let's check the five minutes. Actually, silver dipped relatively more. Gold was making higher lows here, dipped, but not even down to the most recent pivot. Whereas silver pretty much did come to the most recent pivot. I think silver is also good for a long bounce. Yeah. And guys, this is a, another great um, trading, I won't say lesson, but advice. Uh, so gold and silver, they seem to have similar patterns. 
in terms of the setup. So that this could be a hint. They, these are correlated this morning, at least. So what you don't want to do as traders is you don't want to trade both setups, just you doubling down, basically, because when you take multiple trades, make sure these are on uncorrelated symbols at the time, uh, just so you don't you know double down on it. You want to diversify instead. Yeah, they're basically offering the exact same setup, right? Long bounce. But I was comparing two to see, well, which one might we get better reward to risk on? So gold still has more to fall till it gets to this long bounce in terms probably of percentage than silver does. And I noticed silver seems to be selling off harder and faster than gold is by a small margin. But that might be a sign that we might get a better reward to risk long opportunity on silver if people are panic selling and we get to buy you know, lower into our long bounce zone here. So we'll see what happens on that. We have our alert set up. Um, all of these trades have quite a bit of movement to go, and I don't want to short silver or gold uh, this morning, just because you know we're we're at these like I think it's decade highs even for silver. I'm I'm not 100 percent sure. Let me check that out. Yeah, easily. Okay, now which symbol is this up here? Copper. So copper is a different scenario. I'm going to open it up on a different chart. Copper is not as correlated as silver is with gold. Let's check this out on the five minutes. Okay, so very bullish move in the past couple days. Boom, up through here. This zone broke 440-ish, 430, 8, comes down. Now we had a zone break. I think this is a nice zone break retrace opportunity. So Yes, I agree. Please set that's, that's... alert yeah, right here. Remember, guys, when I say um, let's trade when things are, look clean. So this looks like a clean um, setup. What do I mean by this? So we do have bullish momentum. Emmy Rush has been bullish uh, for quite a while. We got our zone break as a consequence of that. And now uh, we made a significant move higher and then a clean retrace. And if you see the retrace back to the broken resistance zone, I think this could be a, yeah, a very interesting trade to take. So, Nicholas, please put the... Uh, the alert for that one. Yep, it's right here. That, that's probably my, one of my favorites so far. And maybe and, I'll put it up here. And the, the reason, guys, why we are um, you know, placing these trades so far away from current price, and please keep this chart open, yeah, sure. uh, is because we don't want to, I mean, even though I said in the morning, perhaps we need to force a trade, but we still have lots of time in this trading session. So I really want to get the price that I'm uncomfortable with. So uh, the best possible time. Um, so that's why we're waiting for a deep pullback. Um, the benefit of that is, of course, we're going to get a much better entry price. And secondly, uh, our stop loss is going to be nearby. We're going to have less risk on the table. So that's exactly uh, yeah, why we're waiting. And hopefully we're going to get that pullback. And then we're going to you know, enter into that trade. Mm -hmm. And if we did enter in on copper... I think a good stop loss, if we entered in, let's say price dips down to here, might be something like this. What do you think, Daniel? Five point? Yeah, or even even less. Uh, even lower? It. No, I mean even tighter. Okay. I would just put it below that uh, pivot high there, just below that uh, resistance zone for now at least. And keep it keep it low for now. And this is a very cheap contract. You can see this is only worth uh, 37 Canadian dollars. So um. We don't have much risk on the table, no matter what, if just one contract. But yeah, but keep keep the stop loss low and we may adjust it uh, depending on how market un is unfolding um, when we get our fill and if we get our fill. Perfect. And here, okay. All right, so the market is opening in two seconds. And let's see what happens and what alerts we get. Excitement of market opening. Oh, gold is uh, rebounding. Is that gold? Yeah. We got an alert. GF. Feeder cattle, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Feeder cattle. Whoa. This is an unfamiliar yeah. contract for me. Is that the... <laughs> um, do you have extended hours? Oh, uh, no, I don't. Yeah. I don't know. Is there even those types of hours? I think... Let me just check. I don't, I, I don't see the RTH, ETH. I think we just stay away from this one. Yeah. Okay. Let me hop over to MGC. All right. And let me just make sure that was the only alert we got. Oh, no. 
we got oh no this is active it wasn't triggered silver so none of our plans are getting triggered yet so let's just keep an eye on the charts here is bitcoin rounding off with these liquidity captures so that's often you know if we lose this that's kind of bearish because we have like a clean price goes up and then rounds the corner and then drops off and sells off and it turns out being a short bounce. This, this could be, uh, Nicholas, if we see um, a retrace back to that uh, resistance level, there may be an opportunity in entering short in Bitcoin for a yeah. quick scalp. Agreed. Okay, let me just make this update. So what was our plan here? And let's just see what the kind of, what the contract values are. So big contract. It's kind of breaking through the resistance very quickly. Am I muted? No, I'm not. Okay. Yeah. So see what happens there. Let's check out these other symbols. Any other alerts that triggered? triggered? ZS crossed. GF crossed. I want to see what's happening also to the indexes. Okay. Oil is still there. Maybe now silver and gold this might be a decent uh, short bounce opportunity but these symbols are so bullish in the recent term that i don't think it's a wise bet let's take a look at mnq oh okay so a nice sell off at the open um yeah not a big surprise there. We've been so overextended on the MNQ. Let me hop over to gold. Okay. And yeah, if we yeah. Do... And Nicholas, uh, yeah. maybe just move a bit slower. I think users have problems to follow the jumping sure, around. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, here this... on gold. If we get our entry, I think, I mean, that's pretty, that's a pretty crazy sell off for it to come down here that quickly. If we do come down here. So if we got an entry at, let's say 70, 75, five, where could we place our target? Maybe somewhere around there and our stop somewhere around here, two to one reward to risk. We'll see what happens. M and Q. I'm checking out right here. A nice sell-off beginning. And here's Bitcoin rounding off here. So maybe we can go in for a contract short if we see a bit of a retrace up for another liquidity capture, but it might be a little bit late. Over here, soybean futures. Was soybean the one that triggered our alert? I think so. This is the one where we saw a zone break retrace, but you said it didn't look very clean. So that's good that we didn't take that as of as of this moment. I think this might be a decent, uh, a decent, a decent short. short. Yeah. yeah. So maybe a, a large this chart, we can discuss why this could be a, short, a good short. Sure thing. So this is Bitcoin on the five minute. And the reason why we think this could be a quick scalp to the short side is because um, price is what we call is rounding off. So it went up to the resistance level on top. Uh, it broke it just for a little bit with lots of liquidity captures, but it seems like a, a failed breakout of that resistance level. So what we could do here, for example, is to uh, re-enter short uh, when price goes up back into this resistance zone, which held up. Uh, at least the breakout failed. So this could be a nice short setup. We're going to place our limit order there to, um, yeah, if price traces up there for, um, you know, a quick scalp to the downside while being aware that Bitcoin has been bullish for a while. So this is a risky trade. It's not, it's not perfect. Not everything is lining up yet. Um, yeah, uh, it could be a quick move to the downside. And since we are day trading, um, you know, we're looking for a quick scalp, not for a fundamental move. But, you know, even in a bullish symbol, you may see um, yeah, a quick... Uh, Should I place, place a limit order, Daniel? Yeah, place the limit order. Um, <laughs> that doesn't make... Uh, they, we, we have, we've got 86, but they're not putting margin on this contract. Put, put the uh, one contract on. Okay. This should be fine. 
I guess uh, interactive brokers doesn't like leverage on Bitcoin contracts. It's it's interesting because you know our risk is literally twenty nine dollars. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess crypto trades are still seen as a very suspicious or high risk from a broker's point of view. So we um <laughs> we have just zero margin on this, no leverage from the. It's also side. not very liquid contract. That's probably yeah. plays into it. Okay, so MNQ is still selling off. I want to see what's happening with gold. Good thing we didn't take this one as of right now. This is soybean selling off. Okay, so copper here was our zone break retrace idea. Um, has not retraced yet, but but if the you keep on copper, is keep, keep keep on copper maybe a bit on full screen so we can follow along. Sure. Yeah. Let me just see what that looks like on the fifty. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay, so here, um, actually, it did. It was. I mean. This is something important to discuss. So we did have our zone break uh, previously. And then uh, price actually did retrace, just not all the way back down to the broken zone. But you can still see the idea of that move that, you know, we got the pullback. The zone was not to the extent that we wanted because we're trying to get the best possible entry price. And this is, you know, one of the disadvantages of placing your limit order a bit further away. Uh, when you want to get the ideal price, you may miss out on that fill. And this is a little bit what we're seeing here with copper. Yeah, and keep it on because. Oh, okay. Yeah. So with copper, and uh, that we did get the bounce off from that move, and yeah, price tend seems to be taken off now. It's now it's it's too late to the game. I would not re-enter now because we missed at least for now this opportunity. But we're definitely going to keep an eye on copper. Perhaps it's going to rebound or retrace one more time to our broken resistance level, now acting as support. Definitely. So I'm going to go back and just look at Bitcoin to see what it's looking like and see if we should we should chase it or not. Also, um, if we hop into this one, because IB isn't offering leverage on it, um, I think wouldn't that lock up the funds to be taking entries on other contracts? Actually, maybe not, because it's only going in for one. Um, I Actually, that, that's not true. We'll be fine. I was just making sure that it's going to give us uh, enough liquidity to take other trades simultaneously. So... Checking out these other charts, this is still Bitcoin. See, at this point, looking at Bitcoin here, uh, it's kind of being, uh, it's we're, we're going to do it because it keeps our reward to risk uh, nice. But sometimes in trades like this, I mean, the rounding has already occurred and it can be a bit greedy to wait for it to come back up again to get an even nicer entry. But we're going to do that. I don't feel like chasing this right now. We'll keep our RR high. And RR, I mean reward to risk. Here is gold selling off after it retraced up to that zone. Maybe we're going to get that long bounce. And it probably looks the exact same on silver. Yeah. Over here, we have oil. And what time frame? That's the 15. So let me go to the 5. So, I mean, oil here as well. This is like a low of how, how long has it been since prices visited 67? scroll back okay just a few days but it looks like it's going to be going lower but again right here it's not an illogical trade to enter in short and place your stop right here but there's just such a range that i think it is safer if we wait to see if it bounces up a little bit more towards 68 uh the nearest setups right now look like silver and gold so i'm going to open those up in a bigger chart and here yeah look we should have uh taking it when we had it there but it still might retrace so we'll see what happens at least the idea here is playing out and this is a common theme you'll see on these nice short bounces is you get a very gradual rounding like uh we mentioned and i think daniel even showed that if you attended yesterday to the webinar last night let me just find a chart i can use i think it was on a stock like this broadwind you'll see these rounding scenarios very often where price very clearly hits a liquidity level and then the highs of the candles keep getting lower and lower you get keep getting lower highs as price fails to hold at a resistance and sells off so let me check out liquidity this is a daily chart right here i think it was on this chart wait for that to calculate 
So he had a nice one right here. Um, it's still a potential, it still potentially can get filled and happen within the time span. Let's check out these other charts, gold and silver. Okay, so this this wasn't the chart, but um, yeah, that is a phenomenon you're going to see a lot where price rounds off of a level, and we could actually see it happening right here, but from for a bounce. So price comes down, then the highs start getting lower, and there's a bunch of liquidity captures, and it turns the corner and goes goes in the other direction. So that's exactly what we saw right here on on Bitcoin. Nicer chart. Okay, so we're going to watch this still. We'll leave that order in. That's fine. I want to check out gold on the big chart. And it's getting close to the low of the day. So maybe we should start planning our trade out right here. Yeah. So this is what we call uh, the long bounce trade. And why is that? Because price is now nearing the support zone below. This is this reddish um, area there. And we have bullish momentum. You can see Emmy Rush uh, is printing a bullish uh, reading since the beginning of um, last night, around midnight. So it's bullish, yet we see now a retracement. Now, these can be good opportunities to re-enter in the overall direction of the trend in the expectation or anticipation that price will not be able to power through that support zone. Instead, it will bounce off from it and then move towards the middle in between support and resistance. And you can see here that Nicholas is placing his limit order just in that, you know, at the at the upper end of this support zone and the stop loss just being below that. Uh, and this is once again, a high reward, low risk trade. Look at the reward to risk ratio. If we see that move happening, we would risk 64 Canadian dollars and potentially would make $163 if this trade works out. Okay, I'm just checking on our other charts to see if we're missing anything. Here we've got another look that looks like that rounding we spoke about where there's multiple captures and lower highs, and then price falls off of the level. Up here, soybean futures. Good thing, Daniel, you called that that was not a clean zone break retrace because if we entered long there, we'd be in the red pretty decently. On the top left here, this is Bitcoin. Looks like, hey, we might get our fill. I'm going to come and check out the bigger chart. And that's probably correlating with a bounce on MNQ or the beginning of one, sort of. And that's on the 15 minute. Let me hop over to the five minute and apply liquidity to the 30. Not that it matters on NQ because this resistance so far away. And also another note, um, let me just check up on our other charts before I get into that. Yeah, this looks like it could be, still could get our fill, like we were saying. Um, a note, let's say you see a chart like this, and at this point, you know a zone break happened all the way back here, but you're thinking, hey, that's so far, that's so long ago that it's it's not even relevant to me right now. Well, what you can always do is either lower the time frame, and I don't even think that'll make a difference right now. If I go to the 15, I think it'll still be a level like all the way down there. Wait for it to calculate, it's still calculating. Yeah, it's the exact same level. But if you want to get levels that you can actually trade off of the current action, try lowering the reference time frame. And if that doesn't even work, also lower the data look back to short term. So that's a setting right here. And yeah. we can see when I do that, now we we see actually that rounding setup we were talking about where there's multiple and, liquidity captures. And for those of you who uh, were joining us for the first time, uh, if this is goes a bit too fast, don't worry. We're going to explain these concepts in our subsequent uh, webinars, which are more um, you know tutorial-oriented rather than live trading. So um, don't worry about that. Yep. And uh, the, the only settings I used here is base reference time frame, which you, know, you can use it to look at higher time frame support and resistance, liquidity levels. And then data look back, which says, hey, do, do you want short-term levels, mid-term levels, or long-term levels from those time frames? Okay, so I'm going to hop over to our Bitcoin chart. I think, Daniel, this might be a good idea to just get in while we can. Um, but uh, I guess well, it's, it's still going up. <laughs> that shows shows the difference in trading personality between Nicholas and me. You know, um, he's always eager to get in, and he's has he's had great success doing that, especially in the prop world. Uh, me being a bit more, you know, 
even if I miss that trade, I want to get the price that I want. So uh, I'm not a biggest fan of adjusting my entries, but of course we do want to take some trades in this session. So um, uh, for that reason, we may take it, but let's just wait for a little bit more, Nicholas. I think we're going to get off. So I can, I can sure. sense it. <laughs> Okie dokie. So MNQ kind of finding some support here. That's three times now. It tried to lose the 2420s, but I don't think it's... Uh, I don't think it's unlikely this is going to collapse. We'll see what happens. Um, but of course, this has been a huge move upwards since yesterday. We'll see what happens. Um, on Bitcoin here, we've got our order in. That's fine. Let's take a look at gold. It must be recovering a bit because we have not got our alert or our fill. All right. It's still, this is like right now, this is a, what we call a magnet zone setup. So price is between a resistance and a support. Why is it telling me gold crossed? Oh, maybe I accidentally moved our alert up to a different price. Um, this is a magnet zone setup. So price is between resistance and support. And this is like perfect. It's right in the middle. So what you do in this case is you say, well, what's current momentum? Is it down? Is it up? Right now, it's kind of iffy because clearly it's pretty much up on all time frames. But this was a fairly strong sell-off this morning. I still wouldn't say the momentum is down. Um, and neither has MA Rush. But in a few bars, MA Rush, you can see these red lines vaguely here. They are going to cross. And once they do cross all in the same direction, MA Rush is going to read bearish. Personally, I would go short here on a magnet zone trade. And the idea with the magnet zone trade is it's like flipping a coin, basically. And you're using the... Um, current momentum from MA Rush as a bias. So although the bias from MA Rush is bullish, you know, we do have a bit of a downturn. I don't know how long it's going to last, but you take your bias and then it's very easy to say, well, my stop's down here and my target's up here. And, uh, you know, it's usually at least a one-to-one -one reward to risk ratio. And you can uh, increase that reward to risk ratio by waiting for a pullback. So if you're betting it's going to come back up here, well, then you might want to do what we're doing here, which is waiting for it to come down more before we enter long. But it looks like the sell-off's at least happening a bit. On MBT, we did not get a fill, but there's a liquidity capture. See what happens. Our order's still there. Bitcoin's probably going to sell off a bit if this continues. If this MNQ trend continues downwards, we'll see. Oil is at low of day. Silver doing the same thing. Oops. Oil is at the low of the day here. Silver doing the same thing as gold. Hop over to this other chart. This one's really having a, a sell-off this morning. This is soybean oil. This one looks like a decent short opportunity. Yeah, especially maybe we can discuss, Nicholas, the uh, role of a liquidity capture. Maybe go to the Bitcoin chart. We just recently had one. Um, sure. And I just want to, before we go to Bitcoin, I just want to point out this chart right here, which is a great example of liquidity capture. So what happened? There was a zone break. Price blew through resistance. Then we got a retrace, but the retrace was kind of crazy, right? It wasn't clean. Price dropped below the resistance that was broken. It didn't hold a support. Then it jumps back up, tries to, whoops, tries to break through the level again. And there's two liquidity captures. And what happens when a liquidity capture occurs at a resistance level? It means there's a lot of selling going on, um, at least when price then doesn't break through the level. So what happened is we broke through, it failed to hold it, and then when it came back up, everybody was like, I'm getting out, and they all started selling. And uh, the resistance level did not hold, the breakout failed, and now we have these two huge candles downwards. So seeing that on Bitcoin, let me go to Bitcoin. What happened here? Actually, the exact same thing that we saw on that other chart, the exact same thing. So let me wait for liquidity IQ. And by the way, if you ever get a red exclamation mark here and liquidity IQ is not showing, it just means the TradingView server timed out when it was trying to calculate because the cal there's so many calculations it does. To update it, just hop in the settings and maybe swap the color theme to get it to retry calculation and then it'll work. Okay, so the same thing pretty much happened here on Bitcoin so far as that other chart where price comes up to resistance. A lot of liquidity captures at 65,000. People are selling. There's a lot of, it's having trouble breaking that level. Then there's a zone break signal right here. Price goes up. 
Then it tries to retrace and see if the, the old resistance will now act as support. It doesn't. People sell off. Once it tries to come back up, you can see the candles wick up into this zone and people start selling. Liquidity capture, liquidity capture. And then it, it bounces off and it's kind of getting that rounded look just like the other symbols. So let me put this to another theme and I want to check out gold. Hopefully one of our setups happens soon. I, I'm thinking it's going to be gold. Um, we'll see. Yeah. Gold or silver, potentially. Huh? Yeah. Let's so let me check it out. This one is really selling off. Okay. Silver. And Bitcoin. It's fine as it is. And you know, sometimes it's it's good to think about the overall context of your setup um, as time moves on. So right now, this is still cool. Like with me, we placed the sell limit order. It's still valid. If price does suddenly fly up there, I think that's still a good short. But let's say 40 or no, 10 or 15 five-minute bars go by, and then price starts to look like it's building support. I'm probably not going to be thinking of that same trade anymore because the moment's gone. At that point, I might be expecting it to come all the way up to the resistance again and maybe break it. So it's, you know, it's it's good to take into account how is the actual current market conditions with your setup and if it looks like it's not valid anymore or conditions are changing, just cancel your plan and change your plans. All right, so here is finally what we're looking for to some extent. So look, there's our limit order right there. We're going to review everything. And what I would love to see with gold here is like a quick move downwards towards that support zone. And I think you've seen this before. If you have this rapid move down, not a steady move, you want to see a rapid move, price wicking down there. And then oftentimes, uh, especially if we have a liquidity capture, that could be a prime opportunity for um, a reversal at that point. So that's um, what we're hoping for here. Well, let's see what pans out. So we do see some rapid action there look at the size of the candles this is a quick move downwards um hopefully we're gonna get it all the way into that zone i still want to get the price that um <laughs> that i you know that i strive for but perhaps we can nicholas i mean move it up just a little bit for the sake of this trading session yeah to uh to get that um bounce trade and uh, another note about liquidity IQ is as the candles get larger, as volatility increases, so do these expected zones of tolerance around the levels. So these are based basically on current candle size. So as volatility goes up, you might expect price to snap way below the level down to here or just come this close to it, which is why we always call them zones and not levels. So like when we had that copper play, which was here. Yeah, and let me know, Daniel, if you want to enter this prematurely at any point in time. So right here on copper. So look at how it came down to this zone, but didn't touch it, right? Well, if we use replay mode to go back to that point in time, it might have actually gone into the zone, which was bigger at the time due to the size of the candles at that time. It wasn't, but it was close. Um, as the size of the candles changes, so does the size of the box to reflect current volatility and what you can expect price to visit. So look at this one. This one's very close to testing the box. Let's give it. Let's, let's wait a bit more. I'm, I'm so yeah, yeah. No, I'm not about to jump in. It's too late uh, now. I'm so but, conservative uh, when it comes to these things because uh, I, I really want the perfect setup, and it, I know they're coming. It's just a you know, if, if we have all day long, we we see plenty of them, and we're gonna get our fill. It's just, you know, we, I do feel a bit pressure to take trades eventually, but it's, you know, we still have almost 35, 40 minutes left. We're going to get our setup. So um, as a trader, sometimes you need to, you know, exercise patience, sit on your hands and just wait for the uh, perfect setup. At least that's my philosophy. I don't like to gamble it away. I want to, you know, wait patiently and then take the trade that I'm comfortable with. All right, so let's see what else. What's going on with the index futures, uh, Nicholas? Can we go to ES, maybe, for example, just to see what? Or maybe also the um, the Russell could be of interest to see if there's anything setting up in terms yeah, of short-term levels. Yeah, sure, I'd actually like to check out. I haven't looked at Dow in a while, so let me check it out. 
what is this? This is a five minute. That's crazy chart. Whoa. Whoa. The sell off is accelerating. It's an interesting symbol. Look at this. One of those rounding scenarios we spoke about where there's a ton of liquidity captures and that's a sign the level holds. This is actually a super clean. Wow. Look at this bullish, perfect liquidity capture. You can see it's way above the level. There's the liquidity capture because at that time, the tolerance zone like here was probably huge. It was probably something like this big because the volatility was so high. Really nice liquidity captures and levels on this chart. Look at these. Price goes up. Liquidity captures. It acts as support. That level acted as support again here. Um, it's kind of like a magnet zone here. Not much to trade on this unless it comes down to 42, 400, basically. Um, 42, 420. And what is the other symbol, Daniel, you wanted to check out? It was the Russell, right? That's M2K. Everything seems to be rebounding a little bit. Yeah, I could. Uh, ah, gold. Gold is, uh, has, <laughs> has, has, has had its bounce uh, exactly as I was, as we were hoping for with the big wig down, just not all the way. So this is uh, a bit of upsetting. Might still happen. <laughs> We still uh maybe yeah five candles on this time frame left or something um or six okay here this is soybean again M2K this is a really nice liquidity capture unfortunately we missed this one probably wouldn't have taken it anyways momentum is still bullish um hmm on M2K. I think this would be a good longer term short like to try throughout the day, expecting it to basically fail to gain uh, 2 two fifty, and for a rounding off to happen. But right now, nothing interesting on this one. If we look back to Bitcoin, because I think we're going to, we may see our fill happening uh, soonish. Uh, price has been retracing up. Yeah, and I guess, you know, we need to take a trade <laughs> for the... <laughs> Entertainment value. Maybe let's take a look at MNQ real quick. I just want to see what's happening. Okay, so it's barely, barely holding on. Let's go back to Bitcoin. And the reason why Nicholas is looking Where's at, it? sorry, Daniel, go ahead. At at uh, the Nasdaq futures is oftentimes Bitcoin for some reason is correlated to what the index futures are doing. So that's why he's, he's checking there because sometimes you know if we see a bounce. In Nasdaq, we may see the same thing in uh, in Bitcoin. Um, you know, this was our original idea. We had, see this rounding up. It's not perfect anymore now because we the rounding is done, and we but we still may see a bit of a still, short bounce. Yeah, it yeah. still looks pretty valid there. I mean, we can easily this can easily yeah. be a higher low. I mean, lower high. So let's let's take a trade so there. A short. Our trade. order is already in place. Oh, it is um, okay. Perfect. Right here. Perfect. So Want let's me to see. just drag it down and fill it. Um, I think we should wait for it to get filled, just because MNQ um, has a long way. As it could easily get some upside, and that upside is going to drive Bitcoin right into our limit order. Yeah. But uh, we'll let's wait. Wait for that. Let me just see if there are some questions. Yeah, and Mike, uh, to answer your question, he says, can you do a, a, a session on swing trading? Uh, absolutely. So every Tuesday, we have our regular member session. And uh, in there, we um, mostly focus on swing trades. And we show you how to find these swing trades uh, through uh, with Liquidity IQ and Emmy Rush and some other indicators. So yes, that will come up, Mike. Don't worry. So this is going to be a, a session on day trading. But swing trading is covered every Tuesday at noon in our regular member session. So um, please look out for that. And we're going to, and these are, of course, also all recorded. So you can rewatch them should you not be available at that time. All yeah. right. We got a fill. And you can see how illiquid this symbol is. How look at that candle. It just flies up. Yeah. Uh, let's wait and see. Okay. So we got filled and, there. And, and let's go back to Bitcoin. Just something to discuss. And this is, of course, in this case, our, you know, it's minimal risk with a very small position size. But keep, yeah, see, a sign that a symbol or uh, is a liquid is if things are very bouncy. Look how um, bouncy these candles are of big gaps in between. If you ever see this, that means, say, this one is, uh, yeah, very illiquid. 
you must put your stop loss a bit further. Nicholas, please put this a bit further away because I yeah, don't want to be just about to say that. Get a I, stupid fill. I don't want yeah. this to be triggered on just bad spread alone. So yeah, so yeah and that's another good point, Daniel. Is that uh, stop losses? In case anyone didn't know, you're like let's say our stop loss is at sixty two, um, sixty five two fifteen. Actually, I'm even going to put it right here just to be safe. If our stop loss is at sixty five two thirty five. Your stop loss isn't going to trigger when price trades at 65,235. That's not when it triggers your stop. Your stop gets triggered when on the order book, there is an ask price of 65,235. It doesn't even have to trade at that. So if the broker has a crazy spread and, you know, right now the broker can just decide to set or, you know, if, if it happens to have an ask price at 65,400 somehow, and then we get stopped out. And that basically happens only on a liquid symbols like this. So don't be placing your stop tight on these types of ones, these types of contracts, because you're going to get stopped out and be like, what price didn't even go there? So that was a good point from Daniel. Exactly. So let's uh, let's yeah, let's keep our stop there and let's see um, what gold is doing. Do we see another uh, interesting setup there? So MGC back here. Oh. It would have hit our target. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Ah, uh, this is ah, uh, whatever. You cannot be frustrated as traders. I just, but this is kind of the an almost perfect setup. It was a wick down, a rapid move down, which I love to see, and I think I discussed this yesterday too. A rapid move, not steady. You want to see a rapid move down with a liquidity capture event. That is when you want to get in because chances that this will bounce off into the opposite direction, um, they are magnified at that point. In any case, uh, we, you know, uh, we may see another chance there. So that's on gold. I'm going to check out silver. And I also want to grab a look at the index. Okay. Still kind of chilling out. Bitcoin is actually going up. So let's see what is the spread on that. What was the most recent traded price? Okay, so it's trying to hold 65,000 again. We'll see what happens. It's still valid. MNQ. Let's take a look at some of these. So we weren't going to trade any of these guys over here. Though this was Bitcoin. Soybean. This one is really sold off. This one is crazy. The feeder cattle futures. <laughs> it's just gone bearish. And it was it had that nice rounding. And it's just nonstop selling off for the past 25 minutes. Might go all the way down to this old level right here, 242. Too late to the party, but it's a nice setup. Or it was a nice setup. Let's take a look. What is gold and silver up to? Gold still bouncing up. Silver, same deal. So another good point Daniel said is um, on gold, we, we, we really liked that as a long trade because of how violently price was dropping down. Whoops dropping down to that zone. And usually when things happen super quickly with a bunch of volatility, they're more prone to reversing. So although we didn't get filled, price didn't dip quite enough. Um, right now, as time goes on, uh, this becomes a less and less valid play. So if price kind of, let me That's get right. a little drawing tool. Let's say it goes like this. And then it comes down to here. Well, I'm not, I'm not going long bounce at that point because now it's not looking so quick. It's looking instead like maybe it's actually going to break the level because um, we've been gradually getting lower highs. So, um, you know, I think right now, if within two candles it drops down to here, I would actually want to maybe put my fill a little bit lower, like down here, because at that point it's like, okay, well, now we're dropping downwards from a lower height. So we might go even lower as opposed to when we, we drop down from here, which is like super quick. Uh, so yeah, we'll see exactly. what happens. So that's what he's, Nicholas is saying. That would be a gradual move down to that zone, which is, you know, less nice of a setup because um, if it's simply like gradual, like a, a good trend happens gradual uh, over time, steadily, not rapidly. So you make higher highs, higher lows over time or lower highs, lower lows over time, steadily. That's a good trend. But a good trend is less likely to bounce off these levels. If things happen like super fast, you have this quick move down with a liquidity capture. That's where often the reversals are happening. And that's what we're betting on. Uh, this, this will 
this was what we were betting on for this gold trade that we didn't get quite our fill, but it would have been a, exactly one example of that kind of setup that we were looking for. Exactly. Okay. Let's put more tabs in here. Okay. So on gold, even if we do get the dip down to here, it's still valid for now, but as we'll see as time goes on, let's check out Bitcoin. Whoa. So Bitcoin is really trying to hold this level. We'll see what happens. It's at 6540. So the big line in the sand here is obviously 65,000, which is nice to have a tight stop on a short for because if it breaks through 65 like that, chances it's going to go to 66, probably pretty high um, very quickly. So this is why we also like these setups like short bounces because you get such nice reward to risk. Um, we're placing a close nearby target here. But, you know, it's not unrealistic to like place your target down here or something, giving you three to one reward to risk. Uh, Nick does, and um, Duck was wondering, hey, Duck, it's actually nice to see you, Duck. I haven't heard from you in a while. Uh, he was wondering, and we have a good example of this, what if, what's the uh, interpretation if we have this big cluster of liquidity captures uh, back to back? Where are these coming from? Uh, what is, what's your take on this, Nicholas? And we see this a little bit in Bitcoin here where we had like a cluster of these liquidity captures at this level. Yeah, so liquidity captures are like an agnostic thing. So they don't mean one thing or the other. The only thing they're telling you is that there's a lot of trading volume and a lot of contracts or like coins, in this case for Bitcoin, exchanging hands near that level. So there's abnormally high volume. And you have to look at the context of what's happening elsewhere. So... Right here, there's a big cluster of liquidity captures. And where are they happening? They're happening at this resistance level, which is basically 65,000. So if price is coming up to that level, we're getting all these liquidity captures. And whenever price has come up to that level in the recent past, there's been liquidity captures and a sell-off. Well, right here, it's kind of telling me that price is really having trouble breaking the 65,000 resistance. It's failed it multiple times in the past. And even though it's setting like higher lows, in this context, like from here, 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 and we can actually see another failure back here. Um, it's still having trouble. And there's been two zone breaks and price for the moment is still setting lower highs on this time frame. Because there's so many captures, that's either a sign that you know the buyers are going to run out of steam and it's going to be a really fast drop, or there's just a lot of buying happening here, a lot of accumulation. And when this does break, it's going to blow through this resistance level. So whenever you see a ton, a cluster at a level like that, it's usually a sign that whatever's going to happen next is going to happen very powerfully. Like it's going to fly up or it's going to plummet down because now a bunch of people have entered into positions right here in this area and uh, they're going to get stopped out or you know, people are going to chase the trend once it takes off. And we're betting here that it's going to go down. Basically, the reason for that, even though MA Rush is bullish, was we were seeing this common pattern where price starts to get a bunch of clusters of captures, and then it starts to get a look like it's rounding off the level. It's looking less like that now, but it still has the look to it a little bit, where price comes up, it like does a bunch of crazy stuff near the level, and then it slowly changes directions and turns away from it. Right now, though, it's looking like this might still push up a bit, it's obviously trying. There's still a lot of buying volume. And the other reason was, well, the market was selling off. And oftentimes when the market sells off, um, Bitcoin also will sell off, at least in the short term. Yep. Okay. And Bitcoin right now is flying up. Looks like it's going to make a high of day. That's okay. It was a super low risk trade. Let's take a look at some of our other symbols. What else did we have? Gold and silver. We need to keep an eye on. And boom, that just stopped out, I think. Bitcoin, yeah, it hit our stop. Unfortunate, but it is what it is. Price broke through. Now there's a little bit more of a zone break. I wouldn't be surprised. Like what I what I would like to do, we didn't do this, but um, is check out. Well, this isn't a liquid contract, right? It's not very liquid. What's actual Bitcoin doing? And even actual Bitcoin actually is flying up and making a high of day. So. That was a good time to stop out. But look at this. Actually, this is a really good point. We should have done this. We don't trade the micro Bitcoin contract that often. But on actual Bitcoin, it's not even at the resistance yet. It's only there now. 
So this might have been a good, it's not even at 65,000. This is the resistance here. I think Niklas maybe can re-enter that one. Actually, this is a really good point. We didn't look at the um, the actual contact, but now we have a scenario where this could be a great opportunity to reshort this one, uh, especially now that we have this big wick up, violent wick up. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised though that it tests uh, 65, but I agree, might as well grab one, right? The reason why we're reshorting this one now is, is this is this big fast move up with which coincides with a resistance level on the actual Bitcoin contract. Where is it placing? I, Let me just sorry, Daniel. I don't believe in um revenge trading or doubling down, but this actually has a valid thesis to it. So um Yes. Okay. Yeah. So now what I would like to do is actually keep an eye on real Bitcoin because real Bitcoin wasn't even at, oops, this is futures, 65K, at least on this Bitcoin version. And it hadn't, you know, we could see these peaks. So the idea is that this is going to be the third peak and it's going to sell off again. Although we'll see what happens. Um, obviously the eye of all the traders is on 65,000 breaking and price flying up. Um, this is a super illiquid contract. We'll see what happens. It is making, I mean, this is now a higher high, but we'll see what happens here. We still got this nice little zone. And checking out gold and silver. Silver really bounced up. This is oil. Our alert was all the way up here on oil. Okay, what else did we have on this chart? Gold, that would have been nice. Copper, that also would have been nice. Check out some others. Okay, here is Bitcoin. Watching this. Um, this is soybean futures, okay. But yeah, that was a good note about crypto. So even though it's still, this is why we have a tight stop, right? It's still a very, the short bounce trade, especially on something like Bitcoin, is one of the riskier trades you can take. Um, because of course, Bitcoin likes to fly up when it does fly. This was a nice liquidity capture too. But it, it offers really nice reward to risk, at least. And, you know, that was a good note for the future when watching crypto is probably... Ignore the exact technicals on your illiquid contract and watch the actual coin itself and its levels um, because obviously the, the resistance and supports differ because uh, the contract is more illiquid and just like goes to approximate prices. And uh, Maureen is wondering, and Maureen actually don't have the answer to this. She's wondering, can you short actual Bitcoin on Coinbase? I don't know, Nicholas. You've traded uh, cryptos uh, with various brokers. Do you know if that's possible to short on Coinbase? Yeah, I would think so, um, but uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, the reason why we're using the futures contract for Bitcoin is it's just so much easier to get uh, to trade this. All you need to have is an interactive broker's or futures trading account, and uh, then you can trade. Bitcoin futures, which follows closely uh, what Bitcoin is doing. So you can place the same trades uh, much with much less commission also. So with crypto brokers, oftentimes for day trading, uh, commission is a factor. But if you trade the futures, then you just pay the regular futures commission on that. Okay, so this is the Dow Jones. This one was really interesting today. Look at the size of these candles on the five minute. It's holding up here. This might be a decent, uh, if MA Rush goes bearish, a decent like magnet zone short. It's really having trouble holding up in this zone. Here's another example of uh, a cluster of liquidity captures. We already pointed this one out before. The Bitcoin contract is showing one, two liquidity captures. And what else can we look at? Unfortunately, we had those two nice setups that just didn't get filled, which was copper and gold <laughs> right here. So yeah, yeah, this is another example of like, we had the long bounce idea. If price 
took four or five, six candle steps down to the zone, I wouldn't be thinking of that as a long bounce immediately at that point. Uh, we'd want to wait yeah. for some other so setup. So for gold, uh, if you look at this chart, we missed our chance there. Uh, now this opportunity is gone. And if you look at the history and maybe go back to Bitcoin real quick, Nicholas, just to see uh, some of these setups that I was interested in. If you look at the history, you get like one chance of these moves into that zone and price bounces off. So that's basically what I'm hoping here now. We're going to still get this chance to get in there and then price will bounce off. Um, and then you have to wait for another completely new setup where price goes into that zone uh, rapidly and then bounces off. Yeah, and look at um, like this setup right here. Kind of rapid. A big candle here, then a wick right here. Bounce off. This one here kind of looks like it does have some steam to break out, but that's okay. It's still a good high probability setup. Here as well, look at how fast price flew up into the level, which made it a good opportunity. Then look at something like here, where price gradually walked its way down, then hung out around the level, broke it, kept hanging around it. That's when these liquidity captures become like less telling of what's going to happen, as opposed to something like this, where price just choo -choo flies down, and then that's a good long bounce opportunity. MA Rush is bullish, and it got a liquidity capture at support. That's the same setup we, we wanted to get there on gold. And Nicholas, uh, somebody's wondering, oil on the one minute uh, setting up for a short, would you agree? Let's see what the one minute on oil looks like. And what uh, time frame? Maybe you don't have not using even liquidity capture, maybe? I mean, put, put it on capture. the five minute just to see what we have there in terms of levels, short term levels. It definitely looks like a good, uh, definitely short biased. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you could definitely short expecting like a zone break here and place a stop maybe at one of these pivots, like here or here. Or even just use the third MA rush line here as like a trailing stop. Yeah. But I, I would just like don't to want see... to take it because, yeah, sorry, yeah. go ahead, Daniel. I would like to see a break through that um, support zone first um, and yeah. then potentially look for a short. Right now, we do have this level, uh, which price is just above there. This could act as supports. So if you see that break below 67, let's say. Uh, uh yeah for sure that could be an interesting short like a break and then a retrace and then yeah, with a tight short with, with a tight stop less yeah so let me just check out bitcoin yeah i think bitcoin uh my glorious idea of bitcoin uh <laughs> <laughs> to reshort it was perhaps not the best one uh it seems oh. to be pushing higher but that's okay it's it still has to because everybody's eyes are on sixty five thousand, right so yeah. it's almost guaranteed to at least test 65,000. Yeah. Let's what see. else can we look at? Yeah, sometimes, you know, the markets are um, what they are. So Bitcoin was a bit of a forced trade, as, as, you, as you see. But uh, I I mean, when we trade our own accounts and we have more time, we just wait for this opportunity that we have, the, the perfect moment. And if it doesn't come, it doesn't come. Then, you know, I have no problem staying flat the entire day. Is just what it is. But to me, that's, uh, you know, this spikes down into that zone with the liquidity capture and then the reversal so likely. And that's exactly what we typically wait for. But let's see in Bitcoin. I think I still have some hope there. This is a level which has been tested multiple times and we had huge bounces afterwards. And, you know, markets are all about patterns and patterns repeating themselves. So let's see what happens there. So here is our stop. Where is it? 64, 65. This is on gold. These are our gold orders. Just oh, that's sure. that's another uh, good. Let's <laughs> get rid of them. Uh, yeah, you want to clean up your account and any pending orders. Um, <laughs> so um, you know, you, sometimes you may forget about a, a fill a, a limit order to enter, or even worse, perhaps an associated stop order or profit order of that. And if you perhaps cancel your limit order but keep your other orders open, you may get fills on these ones uh, completely unprotected. So yeah. uh, that's uh, it's something important uh, to keep in mind to always clean up your act, so to say, uh, when, uh, yeah, when you close out trading. And one other thing about signals here. So right now, look, there's a zone break starting, and the reason there's a zone break starting is because the low of this candle 
is above the resistance zone. So basically the low of the candles broke above resistance without significant um, volume needed. But a zone break only finalizes at the end of a candle. So right now it's you know 40 seconds into this five minute bar and there's four more minutes. If the low of this candle um, goes and touches the resistance, then that zone break signal is going to go away. So if you're ever looking at signals and, you know, betting around them or looking at them in the past, just know that it takes till the close of the bar for it to be finalized, basically. Okay, so let's take a look. Look at how nice this one on gold was. Super nice, super nice also on copper. Um, one thing, oh yeah, so we were, you know, we were taking, placing one order here for like two contracts or something and waiting for it to get filled. Sometimes you'll miss your fill. And like Daniel was mentioning, um, he's more conservative with waiting for the limit price to get filled and more, more willing to be patient than I guess than I am. And But one thing I do use to make sure I don't, I, I get less of these scenarios where I'm like, oh crap, I wish I, I wish I entered is what I'll do is I'll just gradually scale in. So let's say I'm expecting that long bounce here. And my final size that I want to be in is for five contracts, let's say five micro contracts. That's how much I can risk. Then what I'll do is the second price gets to like near the box or at, it touches the top of the box. I'll enter in for one contract. Then when it comes down and touches the actual level, I'll enter in for two. Then if it comes down to the lower end, I'll enter in for the final two or the final three or whatever. And that way I come out dollar cost averaged at the actual center level. And even if it doesn't come all the way down there and it just touches near the top and then bounces, at least I'm in for one contract or two contracts or whatever it was that I scaled in by. Um, okay, so nothing to watch on gold. Bitcoin, look at this, 65,000 on the dot. So there's obviously huge iceberg orders at 65,000 um, with a lot of resistance. And if that does break, it's probably going to go insane and fly up like 300 points in five seconds. But we'll see what happens. I think we've got yeah, our Bitcoin stock Bitcoin being in place. A, you know an unpredictable <laughs> symbol. That's why most brokers don't give you any uh, any margin on it. And so same case here for our, our interactive brokers account. But um, yeah, it looks like and look what happens now. Sixty five is broken and Bitcoin is. And fine. I bet you yeah. our illiquid micro contract has gone up like ten times what Bitcoin is doing. Yeah, so, so I think yeah, I mean sorry, that to me is probably now we can clip close out that trade it's it's not gonna happen yeah, yeah. Uh, our just you want me to exit it fully yeah let's exit it that's um there's no point in waiting this is gonna uh, trigger our stop loss and um yeah uh, this you know the the thesis of having a liquidity capture at a resistance level which is now clearly broken and uh, did not pan out yeah it is sometimes what it is um with trading where do our levels go on this chart? I think I'm looking at the wrong liquidity IQ. Oh, it's because this was the one minute. Okay. So BTC USDT. So yeah, like Daniel said, we're expecting it there to be a liquidity capture. And now at this point, it's a zone break. Well, it's almost confirmed and price is actually taking off. So that's fair enough. Something that I would maybe late on down the road today and maybe we can revisit this in our next webinar is to wait for a retrace now back to that broken resistance level to re-enter long into a Bitcoin. And one more thing, um, you know, we said in the beginning, let's try to put everything into place to increase our odds. Uh, we didn't do this with this Bitcoin. This was more of a forced trade just to show you that, you know, we actually do want to live trade in our live trading workshops. But it was not ideal because, um, you know, we have bullish momentum on Bitcoin and we are shorting it. So yeah, that was... Look at this pattern too, Daniel. Like uh, the one thing great about liquidity IQ is with the, the um, liquidity captures and zone breaks, it's you get to see patterns and like how price is fluctuating. And look at this. So MA rush is bullish or that's actually irrelevant here. But what's happened here is as price is going up in this uptrend, we're getting liquidity captures whenever there's a fast uh, sell-off right at support. And then the support level gets higher. And then that happens again. There's a liquidity capture and it pushes off. It's a higher low. And there's just higher lows and liquidity captures. So maybe this is the actual time that 65K breaks 
and that it's not just another one of these liquidity capture bounces. But uh, yeah, wait, wait for that to play out during the day. 65,000, a big number. Okay. And of course, Bitcoin now is turning a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'd still it's still just, in still just, in progress. So just to uh, prove me wrong on this one. It's, oh, it's right. still yeah, it's not yeah, validated it's... yet. It's normal stuff. Um this one was really nice to short. I don't think we're gonna be getting any more setups like we wanted in the time remaining. What's gold? The big lesson of today, or not lesson, but the big nice setup was probably silver and or gold copper was also really nice though this was they were both very similar in that they came super close this is why you know don't follow and, these boxes and nicholas uh, like, keep keep copper up for example just sure. to reiterate um why this is a nice setup uh, for and he actually everything was checked we just didn't get our fill we had a zone break it retraces back to the broken resistance zone which now acting as support and we had bullish emmy rush reading so everything said bullish, 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 and that would have been a great trade. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get our fill where we wanted to um, because the retracement was not deep enough, but that would have been a nice one. For gold, it was similar. If you're going to go back to gold, same thing. We had a bullish reading overall. Uh, price was approaching our support zone, and the expectation was to uh, it will bounce off to the long side. Once again, a bullish move. Uh, and we had this quick wick down, which I really like to see because that oftentimes turns into a reversal. So once that was a clean setup, but unfortunately we didn't get our fill again. It is sometimes what it is. Uh, but you know what? You only need one of these trades of our, uh, you know, a three to one reward to risk or even better to, to make your day. And it's worthwhile waiting for it uh, until they come along. Oh boy, Bitcoin. It's going down. <laughs> yeah, not that much. It's up. What is yeah. it? Sixty. It's only a hundred bucks off of it. But honestly, for Bitcoin now, I would like to see uh, a zone break read. I mean, we're going to be dying yeah. by the symbol here. It's but still this... not a nice short, though, Daniel. Like this is not a, a nice short, short. <laughs> but but now to me, it would be a long trade because we have this retrace back to the broken zone. So uh, we have bullish, and this to me is, is is a bit of a cleaner setup. Nicholas, uh, do me a favor. Uh, can you put a limit order just <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> put a limit order towards the lower end of this uh oh wait, 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 oh, wait this is wait. the non tradable oh boy maybe uh scrap that <laughs> yeah i would wait on this one just because it yeah. still could be fail i don't like when there's a zone break but then it retraces so quickly cuz then it's like oh maybe it was a fluke yeah. but uh yeah let's check out what does the micro contract look like in our futures? Whoa, it's a big ah. <laughs> it's so a liquid, this symbol. Yeah, it's kind of dangerous, but oh, this one, look, it's more of a zone break retrace, actually. Maybe uh guys, let's let's do it one more time just to um humor me on this one. Put the uh, limit order into the middle of that um broken zone around sixty-five thousand. Yeah one unit and let's see if we do get um yeah stop let's just blow that swing low that's nice and our limit uh yeah at an all-time high let's see if we get a fill there and uh call me stubborn <laughs> <laughs> but um and truth be told this is probably the first time we actually trading the micro bitcoin futures contract in a live trading workshop, this is not typical symbol that we do. Uh, typically, we focus on the index futures. Just today was an exceptional day with no relevant levels around. But um, yeah, let's see what happens here with Bitcoin. All right, so let me look at some questions. Maureen wants to know, how do you determine the depth of the retracement in copper? So maybe let's go to copper real quick. Oh, okay. uh, one second. Wrong chart. This is copper. Yeah. So the idea here was that we actually, I mean, I, just because this is from observation. I'm mainly put not... a replay, Daniel. Sorry to cut you off, but I'll go back to the moment where that happened. So right here, once it loads. Sorry, Daniel, go ahead. Yeah. So here the idea was that 
and this is from experience and observation more than anything else than you know Fibonacci levels or whatever. We often see a retracement back to the broken zone. Um, in this case, resistance was broken. And the idea was, hey, we're going to see that retracement happening again right to that broken level, and then it will take off. It didn't happen today, but of, many times it does happen, and this is, was the idea here. So this was, um, yeah, <laughs> the reason why we placed our limit order at this level, uh, because we often see it retracing exactly to that level. Okay, N key on the five minute. This is a potential long setup. All right. All right. I'm going there. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, you know what, eh? This is probably affecting Bitcoin. Um, so, wow. if, I mean, we do have our thing in order. That's fine. But what would be a smart play is, I mean, this is a nice... This is a beauty. This yeah, is a nice I one. agree. So you're probably going to get our... Fail in Bitcoin because of the uh, bearish momentum in NQ. And I said before, often these are somewhat correlated. Um, if we're going to plan on entering, and we did actually, whoa, that's a ways off. Oh, that's because we were looking at the chart the, time frame, I guess. Chart yeah. time frame. Yeah. So I wouldn't really care about this level here, 220, you know, 2270. It's not very even relevant in traders' minds. Yeah. Probably the real level is more 2200. Um, but looking at this, uh, at, the, at that drop, I'd be less crazy about the Bitcoin setup now because um, it's, <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, being, being truthful here, watching uh, as price comes down. I mean, look, the sell off is not stopping this morning, and there's still 200 points to go. And Bitcoin is trying a very hard level, 65,000. And it's not nice that it has the ankle weights of the actual index. Ah, I'm going to keep this order. And I, I think uh, I know at some point we have to close out the session. But to me, you know, call me stubborn. <laughs> it's, it is a, set, a setup which, just by looking at Bitcoin alone, checks a, a few boxes. Um, we have mm -hmm. bullish momentum overall. We just broke above resistance. Now we see the retrace back to that zone. It definitely has uh, some significance. It's the $65,000 mark. A big psychological number, so I'll I'll keep this in. I mean, good reward to risk. A great reward to risk, and honestly, if this takes off, I would even put my my top profit target much much higher. And if this flies off, makes it never lack higher, which is not unlikely. Uh, yeah, we can um you know get our gains back uh in just one trade. Oh, Definitely, uh, yeah. Let's set up high for you. There we go. <laughs> so we're gonna revisit this trade, and oh wow, NQ going down there, huh? Not That's... to the significant levels though, but like uh, just because I'm looking at a higher time frame, so I click the 30 minute, it's gonna make these levels go much lower. Um, that doesn't mean that the levels from the five minute isn't gonna be a pit stop in the meantime. So price might. This is just as valid. I mean, it's a little less valid than the higher time frame level, less likely to bounce, but once we visit this area, you might see a little action like back here where price kind of hung around for a while because it's uh, there's liquidity there. But yeah, definitely. That's, thanks for pointing that out. Definitely a very nice potential long opportunity on its way soon. Although we did go bearish, so I wouldn't be surprised if we came all the way back down to like 20K within 24 hours but there could be still bounces in the meantime. You're muted, Daniel, I think. Sorry, let's look at Bitcoin one more time. Where are we with our... It's like the, uh, the day of missed opportunities. <laughs> so this actually was a setup I'd be more excited about than the short ones that we saw before. <laughs> because everything lines up. Oh, oil yeah. just uh, triggered an alert for us. But uh, it's probably going to look a little less attractive now. So we will, what we were thinking here um, was if we had to force a trade, we would short this before it completes an actual retrace. But uh, you know, quite a bit of time has passed. I would still want to wait for the actual retrace up to here. 
but that is, you know, it's a good potential trade here. If you should, I'm not saying we're going to take it, but shorting here with a stop loss right at this pivot high, it's only a decent or right above it. It's only a decent trade because it just has high reward to risk. And we were well, actually saying this, Dan. Sorry, and Dan, also it's and also it's bearish, right? That's uh, so we have a zone yeah. break, and you know we we may still see a, a retrace all the way back to that broken zone. But yeah, I agree with you. That could be an interesting short trade as well. And what um, were we saying, Daniel? A user pointed out um, that if you went on the one minute, that it was setting up for a break. Remember, um, CL was setting up for a break on the one minute for a short, and we said that. We would like to see it actually break and then retrace first um, before shorting. And I think we said that around here. Or no, no, no. That's 9.13. That might have been like back here or something. Yeah, I'm, I think the idea sure, was you want to see another zone break before shorting. Which we yeah. Didn't get. And, and what happened here too is a break. But look at this. You often see this, a failed break that looks like this. This isn't really a zone break retrace. In fact, we have a parameter in the indicator for zone break retraces for minimum bars to pass and maximum bars since the, since the original zone break for it to count as an actual valid retrace. So I think here that was like, no, that wasn't even one, two, three, four, five, six. So on this bar, it would have said, okay, it's a valid retrace. But what we, we really like to see is much more relative to the current volatility, much more of a move away from the level. Like this isn't really a strong break here. If it went down to here and then retraced quickly, then it's a nice short opportunity. Okay. But like back here, you know, now it's a much nicer short opportunity than it was down here because we're not like chasing the trend so hard. Although it yeah. does look like it might be reversing and flying back up a little bit. Okay. Uh, Daniel, you're muted. So let's look at Bitcoin one more time before we close out this session. I stand by my uh, idea that <laughs> <laughs> that this could have been a good opportunity. It's a zone break retrace setup. Ah, it's a it's a bit upsetting, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. I, I'm not gonna enter now. I want I still want to get the price that I want, but it looks like yeah, that's funny. That Bitcoin now will make it a high for the day and then I'm going to cancel this order because that zone break retrace has passed also so we it's a day of missed uh, approaches by ticks you know by ticks, only a few yeah. ticks. and uh, you know sometimes uh, we get the filth exactly that we want it makes me personally very happy because it looks just so beautiful but of course uh, trading is not a game of perfection it's a game of imperfection sometimes you just have to uh, you know take the price that the market offers you uh, it's, it's a question of uh, trading personality. In any case, I think if you go back to um, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, just going to look at this chart one more time. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it does look like a nice bullish setup, uh, but I will not chase it. I will keep my limit order there. If we don't get the fill, I'm going to keep an eye on it in the next 30 minutes or so, or maybe even less, uh, 20 minutes. Maybe four or five bars from now, I'm going to cancel that order because that opportunity then, I believe, has passed. All right. Okay, let me see if there are any questions. Uh, Copper is really going crazy today. Yeah. Maureen, Maureen is wondering, uh, so when we look at the retracement, do we FIP level? Do we look at FIP levels at all? Sometimes we do. Uh, today we did not. And it was not a consideration today in our decision-making process, but and Maureen, if you send me an email afterwards, I'm going to redirect you to a video or a webinar, which I had, I think, two weeks ago, one week ago, where I'm showing how we can use FIP levels uh, in correlation with our uh, resistance and support zones to further increase your odds. I'm just playing around with them right now, then. Yeah. FIP lines. Yeah. So with the resistance and support levels, if you're really... And look at this one. That actually really played out nicely is you know you see a resistance and support so let me just get rid of this fib whoops a daisy's wrong click get rid of this fibonacci um obviously for retracements you could just connect a resistance to a support and then you can get um some nice handy levels applied on the chart so if i did that like this from there to there 
that one would have been a nice target to set. And similarly, looking back at this one, I'm just curious to see where that extends to. All the way up there. But yeah, they go along very go to go along together very well. Perfect. Maybe let me share my screen one more time, Nicholas, real quick sure. before we round this off. So I'm gonna go here. Um so one thing this is um copper just so to expand on marine a little bit more. Uh and maybe there's some reason why we did Oh, oops. <laughs> It happens. So one second. Stop sharing. There we go. Okay. So share again. Oh, okay. So here for copper. So what did we hear? I'm wondering, you know, how far this retracement uh, might be. So what you want to do, if you want to use uh, the FIP tools, you want to see, okay, where's my latest swing low that's significant and you know maybe i get maybe here or perhaps i believe it's here and uh, then you just simply connect using the uh fib tool this one up here in trading view is called fib retracement uh to predict okay how far is this retracement going to be so you're going to connect this swing low here and it's the last completed swing low uh, and you connect it with the last completed swing high at this time here. And we can see here, okay, well, if you now look at these levels, I'm going to switch off liquidity IQ to see this a bit more closer. You can actually see that uh, this retracement here was only at the 38.2% level. So that's a very shallow retracement. And from that point of view, it was not unthinkable that price at least will go to the 50% or ideally to the 61.8 percent it didn't line up this way for copper um but yeah i would have expected a bit of a you know more depth retracement um of copper um especially since we only went not even to the 38.2 retracement level okay okay so this is uh one more time going looking at bitcoin oh see where what's our entry price there nicholas again it was down here at 65,000. Uh, somewhere here okay yeah 64970 on bitcoin yeah so we'll see i'm going to keep this open maybe we see another retracement and perhaps then a big another push upwards uh, something to keep an eye on and we're going to follow up with all this in our uh, next live session which is next tuesday and uh, this time it's going to be um you know uh, not a live trading session just a regular live session where we're going to discuss uh, some swing trading setups we're going to discuss our trade of the week, our swing trade of the week. So, Mike, um, please look out for that. And we're going to share with you some, some tips and tricks about our indicators. We're going to answer lots of questions. And what else are we are going to do? We're going to look at some news that are coming up in our company, of course, and some live market events, uh, what to look out for in the markets moving forward. <laughs> and Maureen says, yes, a 38.2% level for COBA would have been acceptable according to market theory. Yes, uh, true. Not my favorite retracement level. So me being so conservative with my entry, <laughs> I want to get my perfect entry, uh, ideally at the um, you know 61.8%. Uh, but of course, that's just me. That's my own my own quirks. All right, guys. So that's it for today. Um, yeah, not the... Um, results that we wanted but i think the setups that we pointed out they were uh, for the most part uh right on just we didn't get our fills but had we gotten our fills that would have been a yeah an interesting trading day so now we'll, we were left with our two bitcoin trades i'm just gonna look one more time <laughs> call me obsessed what bitcoin is doing yeah we'll see maybe we see another retracement back to this level which could be a long opportunity all right with that, guys, uh, thanks for joining. And I see you all in our next session. Look out for that. It's going to be on Tuesday at 12 p.m. Eastern. And so then, guys, have a nice day. Happy trading. Thanks, Nicholas.